And welcome back to Flexible Games, where we are covering the nuclear reactor mod that I just finished. It is glorious. Um, as part of the mod tutorial series, I will also be coming covering a little bit of the final tutorial-esque sort of things with that. But without further ado, you can see how far down I am, minus 1263, to find some uranium. So here is a block of uranium right here. Now, this is the only, and I mean the only machine in the game that can mine this stuff. So if we take a peek at this block here, we can see that we've got almost 2 million in there. This, e this drill mines with about an 80% efficiency, so you'll get quite a lot of that, but you'll need quite a lot of that. So I'm gonna grab some of the uranium out of there and show you a little bit of what this machine does. Um, now, normally, uh, this machine cannot mine something as hard as uranium, but this one is very special. I had to create my own motor and my own drill head, which is why it's animating. Um, it will automate, it'll animate all the time. I think the developer is going to look into uh, modifying the script that's associated with that and allow me to control the, the, the animation a little bit. But I like the little fingers scraping at the at the block there. It looks pretty cool. Um, also, I'm not getting any of the rotating the animations on the motor. But this thing will uh, turn. It, it takes a couple seconds, but it will eventually line up and work just fine. So let's head up to the surface and see what we can do with all this uranium. I did create a, a uh, teleporter to go down there, but I don't have another diamond to make a teleporter to go come back up, so I had to do it this way. So this mod adds four multi-blocks and four other generic auto crafting machines as well as plenty of uh, items. So a brief look at some of the items here. Um, here we have the uranium itself. Here we have the yellow cake, and here we have the uranium dioxide. Now to get these materials is this little crafting setup. This is a simple setup, not at all optimized for peak throughput, but this is your regular Mark V battery. This is the centrifuge, and yes, it looks like a blast furnace, but it is indeed a centrifuge, and the way that you can figure that out is if you throw some yellow cake in it, normally the the spin the things in the middle spin very very slowly, but this one, they they spin up and they go quite fast. Now the crafting time on this is 30 seconds. The game is balanced around you needing four of these, and you need one trencher per reactor. You need four of these and you need eight of these. These are the yellow cake processors. This is important because these take chlorine. So we have a little bit of chlorine that we can add to this, and this takes a thing of chlorine, a hundred uranium, and it compresses it and presses it into a yellow cake. It does so fairly quickly, but again, you're gonna need um, eight of those every minute because the reactor uses its fuel once per minute. So here we have the thing spinning up. Let's take the rest of these out and see. And this, the rest, the crafting on this is one chlorine for a hundred uranium. And you can see that thing slowly spinning down because it ran out of material. And here we have the uranium dioxide, which is used by the primed fuel rod crafter right here. So when this thing is up and running, it needs a empty fuel rod, which is produced from composite alloy. Now composite alloy is created from chromium and molybdenum. 
and the ratio here is three smelters will keep one of these running full blast. So these smelt pretty fast. They use a, quite a bit of power, but uh, they smelt pretty fast. Throwing in composite alloy, and then there's six composite alloy um, that ne is needed to make an empty fuel rod. So once you have the empty fuel rod, and you have all of the ingredients together, you can put them all together in the primed fuel rod, which takes eight uh, uranium dioxide, one empty fuel rod, and crafts it into a primed fuel rod. So if we look in here, we have three primed fuel rods. They look like gold pipes because that's, the, that's what I used for them. Uh, yellow cake looks like gold plates. Uh, and, and other miscellaneous things that I had to use but this process should all be automated in the end so let's look at the nuclear reactor itself this baby is ready to go I have zero fuel left so it is generating zero power per second if we look at our power storage you can see that it is using a little bit of power um, let's throw in some Let's see, how much uh, uranium do I have? I got quite a bit of uranium, so I need to put in some chlorine. This thing will use eight chlorine per minute, this setup, to keep a reactor going full blast. Eight chlorine, which requires 32 filters. So you're going to need 32 chlorine filters down in the toxic caves in order to get enough chlorine to run one of these reactors. But it's worth it in the end because when you have the fuel, I've already got Freezon in here, and Freezon is our coolant. So this is important. This needs to be cooled because you can build these reactors anywhere. There's no height limit. You can build one of these babies anywhere you want, but you need to keep it cool with Freezon. And the fuel time and the coolant time are actually identical. The, it's 60 seconds by default. And all, pretty much all the variables involved with this chain are configurable with the XML uh, config file that I include with the mod. So follow along on all of those. Uh, pretty much the same as my excavator mod or my query mod. Same setup applies. So if we want to generate power, it's already got some freeze on. Let's throw in a reaction. So we are generating 50,000 power per second right now. So if we look at our battery, you can see 50,000 power per second. Essentially, every fuel rod will generate 3 million power. Now, if you really wanted to, let's take the freeze on out of there. If you really wanted to and, you're, and you felt a little daring, uh, you could kind of tweak your setup or manually feed it if you really wanted to um, freeze on because if you are running it but it is not being cooled the power generation doubles however problems happen if you let it run too long uncooled as with any nuclear reactor so we have just a little bit of cooling left. I, I'm trying to track down why there's about a 0.2 second difference between the, the uh, coolant and the fuel. I have not figured out why that is yet. I have a, I have a sneaking, under, sneaking suspicion, but I don't mind that's a slightly different. Um, but if we try to load this up, all of a sudden we run out of coolant and it's giving us a huge warning. See the text? A reactor is overheating. You have 60 seconds. So this thing is starting to count down for a meltdown. So you have to be very careful. If that text pops up in your, bar, in your, uh, in your screen, you have a reactor and you have 60 seconds to get to it before really bad stuff happens. So we just threw some coolant in there. And it says, okay, we've got coolant, it's good. If you don't, it explodes. And this is the hole that it generates. 
So this thing explodes with the the force of roughly a level eight bomb. Um, so I I set one off in this area here to show you that it carved a massive area of land out. So if you don't want to charge a level eight bomb, you know, if you really want, you can use this reactor to do just that. But the power generation doubled when we were processing without any coolant at all. So you can see all the people who have been following along in my tutorial series. There's all the pop-up text that I showed in um, one of the episodes. And here is the whole system up and running. Again, if you use this in the game, you're going to need the frozen factory. It, it, there is a research that unlocks as soon as you research the frozen factory. And you have to scan uranium. You have to find it. But it's a little easier to find after you start mining it. One of the things, one of the little items that I add to the game when you find your first uranium and you start mining it, what you can do is you can craft these uranium ore pings. And yes, it says crystal. I'm using the crystal sprite right now. I don't have any any of the icons done. But uh, when you are in an area with uh, uranium, so here's my uranium smelter or my uh, my trencher. I can hit this uranium ore ping and there's all the uranium. So once you once you find it and you start mining it, f finding other veins is relatively straightforward. So you can see it, it doesn't go up very high from here. I am below the magma caves. So you have to figure out a way to get below the magma caves as well as try to automate cargo lifts from below. And again, you're gonna need one of these trenchers for every uh, reactor that you wanna run full speed, uh, 100%. So that will do it for the nuclear power mod. This adds a significant amount of uh, play to late game. If you want to build this, you will be able to build this whole setup before you build the magma bore, before you build your geothermals. So it is an alternate power source. If you really want to uh, spend a little bit of extra time to build this setup and get it working, look at that uranium vein that's down there. You can get this working and get this powering uh, everything in your base as well as your magma bore eventually because it's 50,000 power per second per reactor that you're running. A significant amount of power. I hope everybody enjoys the mod. Give me some feedback either on Discord, on the, the Steam page, uh, or on the channel if you wish. Um, again, I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.